All right, that's why Adam does the clap. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to You Like It Extra in the isolation sessions. Uh, my name's Jack. I am one half, or the only half, of You Like That Extra while we're in lockdown still in New South Wales. Um, it, it sucks and I hate it and I wish we weren't and all of that stuff, but whatever. Uh, hey, I'm wearing merch. I'm wearing You Like That merch. Go to you like that podcast store, pick yourself something up. Um, the hoodies are quite small, so if you think you're a large, get an extra large um, because they're pretty small. There's nothing more to say about that. We have nothing to do with the production or anything, so don't come at us. Jesus Christ. You like that podcast store. The theme this week was picked by a friend of the show, Jessica. Uh, yeah, we're in lockdown, so why not do movies that take place in one setting? Um, I don't really remember the choices. I think that was Buried with Ryan Reynolds, which is a movie I really like. But there's not that much to say about it, really, other than, hey, it's quite interesting. Um, I chose 10 Cloverfield Lane um, because I fucking love that movie until the last 15 minutes, uh, for reasons you all probably know. Um, I chose The Invitation, again, because I'm just so desperate to talk about The Invitation. I want everyone to watch The Invitation and tell me how good that movie is and how correct I am about everything. And The Breakfast Club, which won out... John Hughes, 1985 classic, 1985 classic, I didn't just check my notes, audio listeners, video listeners, shut up, it's between us. So yeah, movies that take place in one setting, it's a pretty interesting idea, hard to do right, uh, it just sounds like it just could be really boring, couldn't it, you know, like only one setting, you, you notice and you pretty much always notice just one location things. Um, I remember when that episode of Breaking Bad came out, the bottle episode of that, uh, The Fly. Man, people really didn't like that. I did because I just like everything Breaking Bad did. Even season two. Yep, I'm the one guy who liked season two. The Breakfast Club, John Hughes. It's a name you all know, but you don't know why. It's because he did The Breakfast Club, that's why. I don't know any other John, John Hughes movie. I always get him confused with Cameron Crowe. No idea who Cameron Crowe is. Couldn't tell you for a million bucks. I just know that name. Probably no relation to Russell. Who knows? On your ass. Breakfast Club. Oh, man, this is a, uh, a cold classic, I guess. I don't know. Was it big at the time? I couldn't really find out. The reviews, like, on the Rotten Tomatoes, the critics was 89%. That's really positive. But all the reviews I read were just kind of like, yeah, yeah, it's predictable and it's sweet and, yeah, nice. <clears throat> but the audience is 92%, so I guess it's not a cult classic. I think it's just a classic. I think everyone loves this movie. It's a great teen movie that everyone loves. It deals with topics of you know, belonging and living up to your parents and becoming your own person, right? It's a good, uh, like, year 11 English movie, isn't it? I, in fact, that's probably where I first saw it. I thought I first watched this with an ex. Um, an ex, like I have so many... <laughs> Um, but I might, it might have been high school and we had to do a report on it and I wish I still had it because then I would just read it verbatim and do this episode um, with a year 11 book report, school report, movie report, essay, who knows, whatever. Um, I, I worked six days straight and I just, like, I, I finally finished that six day straight run so my brain's just fucking, just mud at the moment, just a big old mudslide. And I'm not drinking because it's locked down and that's that didn't go so swell last time. So yeah, my brain, I'm just scattered. Scattergun. Scattergun at the moment. But maybe you'll like that, maybe you'll hate it, maybe you'll tell me to shut the fuck up. Um, also, without the sun lighting me, I had this weird interrogation lamp just like pointed at me. I'm very sorry. Audio listeners, none of that matters. It's between me and the video people. I'm looking at the microphone as I'm talking to this. The Breakfast Club. <laughs> We're here to talk about The Breakfast Club. It's a movie by John Hughes that was made in 1985. Emilio Estevez, Anthony Michael Hall, Judd Nelson, Molly Ringwald, and Ali Sheedy. They're your main cast members. Uh, the principal guy is some other bloke. I don't know, I didn't write it down. <clears throat> Five high school students meet in Saturday detention. Didn't know that was a thing. And discover they are a lot more alike than they originally think. That was my little basic synopsis that I wrote and made up. And that's kind of the review of the movie, isn't it? Like, that's that's it. That's that's the movie. There's not much else more. 
Uh, the power of this movie comes in the performances, obviously. Um, fucking hell, it's a great cast. It's such a fucking great cast. And they bounce really well off each other. They, like, actually have chemistry. It's a bit weird and janky at first. And, like, you know, they're talking like teenagers. Like, you have to remember it's the 80s, so I don't fucking know how teenagers talked in the 80s. But it doesn't really feel like it's how teenagers would talk or real humans at all would talk. But... You know, you gel into it. You get into this movie. Uh, Runtime's short. It's like an hour and 20 minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Can we have more of that? Black Widow's coming up this week, and I just know it's going to go for fucking four days, and I'm not looking forward to it. Um, hopefully the lockdown is lifted by next weekend, so Adam and I can do Black Widow together. Not looking good at the moment, but we'll, we'll figure it out. Maybe we'll both do Black Widow episodes, and you'll have to watch both on, like, two laptops. Uh, the Breakfast Club. <laughs> Fucking hell. I should have just waited till tomorrow after I had slept to record this. People are hating this right now, but I'm loving it and I'm having a great time. Uh, yeah, it's just like, you know, you've got... Okay, so so when, when you watch a movie like this, you go, oh, you know, it's very stereotypical. The, the reason it's stereotypical is because it invented it. Um, I didn't like the movie Insidious when we watched it last year. Because I thought, I was just like, I've seen this a million times before. And the reason was because Insidious was first in that American horror movie wave. This is very similar. That teenage, you got your bully, you got your jock, you got your geek, you got your, your princess, your prissy princess character, your rich prissy princess character. And you've got just your weirdo. <laughs> I don't know what they were doing with Alison. They're just like, ah, I'm sure there are some teenagers like this. But yeah, and they all... Of course, they all meet in detention. That's the first time they've ever met. They, you know, it's revealed they're vaguely aware of each other in the halls or whatever, but they don't know each other at all. They've never met, don't know anything about each other. And so it's very uh, confrontational to start, you know, as put a bunch of teenagers in a room quietly where they have to be quiet and there's going to be conflict, of course, straight away. You know, you got just rampant egos at that time and hormones and you don't really know what you're doing and you're, you're sort of always putting on a show you know you're always performing for fucking 10 years of your life you are just performing at all times and it's exhausting honestly um you'll grow out of that if you're in that phase right now chill out you'll grow out of that you'll figure it out um good luck just you know stop performing eh? no one gives a fuck and that's kind of where this movie goes, you know, they slowly learn more and more about each other um, for good or for ill. Uh, the, the main main character, I guess, is the, the uh, what's his name? John. John, the, the bully, the, the rough and tumble criminal guy. And sort of it really centers around him because he's the most performative. He's the one who's given everyone a hard time. And he's the one who's like, yeah, fuck detention. Uh, let's have some fun or his version of fun, which is just shitting on everyone and intimidating people and giving the uh, the principal a bit of a rub. And, you know, you, he, you learn why he's like that. And it, nobody knows whether it's real or not, it's a performance or not. Uh, essentially, he's gonna, he, you know, he gets abused by a drunk dad and that's why he is the way that he is. And then that sort of un unlocks the the rest of this movie which is living up to your parents or becoming your parents or both you know like brian you know he what could brian have to worry about he's this little dorky nerdy kid who just gets everything right and does really well at school except in one class you know it's it's the lisa simpson joke it's the it's the he, she can't do pe or whatever he can't do shop class woodworking or something and he's, and he's so scared of his parents, like, uh, I could get straight A's in everything except one class, and that one class is what will matter and will dictate the rest of my life and what they think of me for the rest of my life. That, that's a scary thought, and that's probably something, like, people who did well at school worry about, you know? I didn't go to school. <laughs> I stopped turning up in year 10. And look at me now. Um, and then you got Claire, who's just like, you know, uh, parents just bought her way through everything, you know, she she doesn't ever have to try. Um, but, you know, that brings its own frustrations in, as well, because you can't be your own person. You can't, you have to be a certain thing. You have to be the popular girl when you come from a wealthy family and you can't 
learn about other people or give other people a chance, such as like Brian or Allison, you know, because you have this image to uphold because you're the rich, rich girl, you're the rich popular girl, the prom queen, as you will. Uh, what do we got? We got Andrew, Emilio Estevez, who looks so much like Charlie Sheen, like, god damn, you can tell they're related because they are spitting image, absolutely identical, it's very distracting. Um, where did he go? Where did Emilio Estevez go? Is he, is he doing the Mighty Ducks thing? Is that him? Should have looked that up, but I don't remember. Whatever. Martin Sheen was in The Amazing Spider-Man. I remember that. He, he's a, he's a jock. He's a sports guy. He has to make weight and be a wrestler. I guess wrestling, like high school wrestling was big back then. It, it, like, you would expect it to be football, but it's not. It's wrestling. It's, it's very strange. Um... Yeah, and he's living up to, you know, he he wants to impress his dad. He doesn't want to, you know, he's very, very aware of what his dad thinks. And it's not about fitting, like, I guess it is about fitting in with his dad. He wants his dad to be proud of him and sees him as a friend, I guess. And that's what I took from it. Fuck if I know, I don't remember. I, I literally finished watching it 25 seconds ago. <clears throat> and then Alison... God knows with Alison, she's just like, uh, you think she's a mute at first, she's very, very strange, like, um, you know, she does some art, and she's very good at art, I guess that was a commentary on people who like art or weirdos, I guess, um, but you know, she comes out of a shell and starts talking more and more as everyone else, as she sees that everyone else is not bonding, but having, like, making something out of this day and talking and getting along sort of eventually they get along a spoiler alert but yeah you know yeah it just happens it all goes along nicely and sometimes not so nicely and then they smoke weed together and there's like a weird like straight out of the monkeys or something like chase sequence through the halls it's very slapstick it's very strange the the principle is straight up what Principal Skinner is based on, obviously. Like, there's even some lines where you're just like, that's Principal Skinner, like, I can hear him saying that. And I'm sure Matt Greening absolutely based Principal Skinner on that. Like, the best line ever, I say it all the time, is if you mess with the bull, you'll get the horns. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's such, like, a teacher thing to say. I fucking love it. And then, you know, they try and give him a, a sort of um, a philosophical moment to via the janitor. Um, the janitor sits him down and he's like, hey, if you're a 16-year-old, you would treat yourself now the way they're treating you, you know. Um, he also tries to fight John, it, like threatens to hunt him down and kill him. <laughs> it's pretty brutal. I don't know if teachers do that anymore. Or ever did, I don't know. I don't know many teachers. So, you know, there's that... Uh, it's not even a really parallel storyline. It's pretty, like, the, the principal's not really in it that much. He's not a villain or anything. He's just kind of there to sometimes create humour and yell at the kids. He doesn't keep them in line or anything. I don't know. I don't know what the point of him is there. Except at the end where he's like, ah, the, the letter the Brian has to write. He's just like, ah, you adults only see us kids as the way you want to see us. We're our own people. We have personalities and we're individuals and we know stuff, which is a good message. So again, teenagers, you absolutely are your own person. You do know stuff. You don't have to be a certain type of way. Just be yourself. It's a very good message. But yeah, there's good chemistry between them, I think. I think it's like, it, it was shot all in sequence, I read. It, so in order, that means, I believe that means, pretty sure that means, shot in sequence. So like, yeah, you really do feel like the cast members were getting to know each other. The fucking set, by the way, the set is insane. That library is insane. What high school has a library like that? You know what our library had at school in the middle of it? Fucking lizards. There was just like a pen, like a glass box, with fucking lizards in the middle, and you know, you'd be doing your homework at a free period or whatever, and you'd just look at the lizards. It's kind of sick. I got nothing against the lizards, but this thing has like this incredible statue, and it's like... The size of fucking the biggest, like, Brixton Academy you've ever seen. It's giant. It's very strange. But anyway, the set the set is unreal. And, yeah, you... Again, I say it a lot about sets. A like good set is when you can 
you know your way around it. You know, you, you know where everything is. That's very, very important in a set, especially in a movie where <laughs> there's only one set pretty much. So yeah, the library's cool. What was I saying before that? Nobody can answer me because this is pre-recorded. Fuck. Oh, they all get along. Good chemistry, they all get along. They all know each other. They, like, a lot of it was ad-lib. John Hughes was very big on ad-libbing. Um, the scene where they're, they're saying why they're in detention, that was mostly ad-libbed. Like, some of them just fucking made it up as they went. And, you know, that, and that story, of course, changes throughout the movie as well. Like, when they're lying, when they're performing, when they're making shit up, and then just the brutal truth at the end. And they're having all these nice moments, and they, like, smoke weed and stuff. Which, the principal's not doing a very good job, because, like, they're making a fuck ton of noise. Like, they've just shut a door. They're, like, smoking shit tons of weed. Old mate's hotboxing an entire room. And the principal just has no idea. I guess he doesn't care. I guess that's the joke. He's not paying any attention. But, you know, he wants to be this strict, authoritative guy. Whatever. Oh, pardon me. Sorry. So, yeah, and then they have the big moment at the end where they're talking about, you know... Would we be friends outside of detention, outside of this day, this little world they've created for themselves just on this one day? Like, you know, so much happens in that one day. They discover all these new people and their backstories, I guess, while discovering their own backstories and realising via the other people's backstories, you know, when they line up or when there's similarities or something, like... They're learning more about themselves and they're like, holy shit, I am just trying to be like my dad or holy shit, I am just living off my dad's money. You know, it's very nice, but it's pretty brutal at the end when, you know, they say, well, we'd be friends outside of this room. Well, no, they wouldn't. And that's absolutely true. And then it's just like, ah, oh, the weirdos, the weirdos would still be nice to everyone because weirdos make the world go round or something. I don't know. Whatever. But yeah, it's, it's just like, you know, it's hard to review this movie it's hard to like go in on this movie because like what i do when i review a movie is just talk about blowing shit up i guess or like or performances and that's pretty much what this movie has everyone's great i think molly ringwald really stands out she was fucking such a star man like you just believe her so much like you believe all the pressure she's under and just like you know, the, the boys, like the jock and the, the criminal guy, they have all their big monologues and stuff and their macho monologues and stuff. And it's like, they're really putting it on. And I don't know, like, <clears throat> if that's just the actors, like, having their moment in the spotlight or whatever, or if they're really good actors and they're like, yeah, a teenager would show this kind of bravado or macho-ness and say weird, like, outward, again, I'll say that word, performative things. Whereas Molly Ringwald's just like, she's like a pressure vessel and she's just like, yeah, yeah, shut up, shut up, whatever, whatever, until they poke her enough and she just explodes, you know, and has a really, really big meltdown at the end, really brutally honest meltdown at the end. She's just fantastic. So shout out Molly Ringwald if you're watching this. <laughs> shout out. Good performance in that movie you did a million years ago. Um, Yeah, but it was written in like two days, John Hughes, I guess, knows what teenagers talk like, but... You know, again, there was a lot of ad-libbing. I'm sure the actors had more of a say in what 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 dialogue went in, into it more than John Hughes really did. I guess John Hughes just like, hey, here's the beats you have to hit, kind of go with it. And I like that. I liked it in a movie. Sometimes it doesn't work. Like, you know, like, say, any of those, like, Will Ferrell movies where they just let Will Ferrell go nuts, and it's like, no, well, sometimes you need a director. Sometimes he's really great, sometimes you really need a script. But here, it totally works, and you totally believe everyone, you totally believe they're all teenagers with their own problems, man, and yeah, it's just good. It's a good movie. Uh, not much of a headline. The Breakfast Club, good movie, yeah. Um, but yeah, watch it. Uh, it's not on any streaming. Uh, you have to rent it on iTunes, which is how I do most of these movies. Cost me a fucking fortune but i do it for you the audience and adam adam's approval mostly god i wish i was like adam i hope adam approves of this i hope adam likes me anyway the breakfast club good movie watch it i don't know if i said much about it i probably didn't good performances and if you're a teenager it's pretty important to watch i think about belonging 
Um, that's the buzzword, isn't it? You, you will fit in. You will find some way to fit in. It happens for everyone. <sighs> high school was a weird time, wasn't it? Man, high school was brutal. I asked for some questions, but I asked for some questions very shortly before I started like watching the movie and recording this. So I didn't get many. Thank you to Jessica for the idea for the, of this episode and the theme of this episode. Thank you to um, Alyssa for contribute con oh fuck me con <laughs> contributing movie ideas for this episode and then thank you to both of them for asking me a couple of questions um just to what we what's known in the business as padding for time to try and <laughs> bump the number up a little bit because that review was not very long but again not a whole lot to say about it that's not on me you can't come at me for that right Jessica, how long is it going to take you to read sharp objects objects, so that we can talk about it? Fuck me, we're falling apart here. How long is it going to take you to read Sharp Objects, which is a book written by the woman who wrote Gone Girl. I wanted to read Gone Girl, but Jessica... Oh, context. I want to read books. I want to start reading books again. I was going to buy Ghost of Tsushima, but then I was like, you know what? I've got games. I've got unfinished games. I'll save the money. And I'll start reading books, especially before bed, so I can like sleep a bit better and not completely lose my fucking mind. So, and Jessica is the go-to for books. She knows everything about books ever. She's read, I think, all of them, like, like in history. And she said, "Don't read Gone Girl if the movie's fresh in your mind, because the movie." So she's given me that that author's one of her other books, and thankfully, it's like a much smaller book. Because it's going to take me a long time to read anyway. It's going to take me a long time to read. I'm sorry, I'm a very slow reader. The problem is my phone exists. So I start reading something and then I'm just like, hmm, you know what? My phone. And then I just look at my phone. Um, but I have deleted Facebook and I have deleted Twitter. So maybe I'll do some more reading. Because there's less to look at at my phone. Once I delete TikTok, oh man, I'm going to be way into the books. I'm never going to stop reading. But... TikTok's going to be very hard to delete. I fucking love TikTok. Um, so yes, thank you for lending me the book that you haven't lent me yet. Alyssa, would you rather be always itchy or always sticky? I want Adam to weigh on, in on this too. So Adam, if you're watching, please tell Alyssa your answer to this. I think I would... Jeez. Oh, so, so I know what it's like to be itchy, and I hate it. I don't like being itchy. Being itchy is a bad sensation it feels bad i'm not often sticky i can't remember the last time i was sticky um no jokes please but i guess i would have to be sticky like being itchy sucks man it's so uncomfortable so yeah i'm gonna go with sticky depending on what makes me sticky i don't think i want to know um did you ever get an out of school hours detention and why yes in my entire schooling career i got one afternoon detention um, in the, ooh, oh, it w probably would have been year 10, maybe year 11. It was around exams time and they were going to, they were going to like do something to our exams. We're like, no, 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 like don't do any, we'll do an Arvo or something. They call it Arvos in Australia, afternoon detention, Arvo. So they gave us an Arvo and they were like, ah, oh, you guys are like kind of spotless. What we did was we, we began to jack ass at the time, of course, in doing stupid shit and filming it. Very early smartphones. Not even smartphones, just very early camera phones. I'm very old, I'm sorry. And yeah, we filmed, uh, we put a thumbtack through a ruler and we were just spanking people with it because, of course, why not? It's funny. I dropped me Dax, got the old fucking white whale out and um, yeah, they weren't too pleased with that. But only because our school emblem was in the background they were like if if the school emblem wasn't there there's nothing we can do about it we can just say hey don't do that but school emblems in the video we got to set a standard do an afternoon detention and we got a cool teacher who really also didn't want to be doing the afternoon detention so it was just like ah just like draw or something i don't really give a shit you can talk don't look at your phones and that was about it that was the only other i ever did um yeah, they rang my mum and to tell her, like, yeah, your son got his white little took us out and took a thumbtack up it. It didn't go up there. It was in the cheek. 
Which Breakfast Club character did you relate to most when you first watched it versus now? Well, I don't really remember the first time I watched it, but I would have to say, I, like back then, it would have been Brian, the dorky virgin nerd. Um, now, at age 28, it would be Brian, the dorky virgin nerd. Um, I'm definitely not a Andrew, like he, he just speaks on behalf of the, the of Claire all the time. Like they're not even an item. It's kind of implied that they hang out in the same circles. But he just like kind of speaks on behalf of her and butts in and just like defends her honor no matter what. And she's like, well, maybe she doesn't want that. Maybe she wants to speak for herself, maybe. I'm definitely not a John, I'm not a criminal. I, w I was a little bit like overly performative like that. Like uh, if I'm gonna get in trouble or if I'm already in trouble, I'll keep pushing the button a little bit more to make people laugh. <clears throat> I was always for making people laugh, but I did not like to get in trouble. I was not a criminal. I did not have marijuana. Um, I did not set fire to things. I did not crawl through a roof, but I was very performative and would do most things for a laugh. Um, usually involving nudity. I don't know, I was much more... I had my decks down a lot in high school. But yeah, um, unfortunately I'm a Brian. I'm just like, you know, when 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 someone makes a joke or something, Brian will come in with just like, oh, but actually, and then just like, you know, very matter of fact. I'm not saying I'm smart. I'm not saying I know anything about anything because I don't. But I always will just like quietly under my breath just be like, well, well. especially about movies. If someone says something about a movie, I'm like, oh, hang on. This is actually it. Did you hear the cat? The cat's button and the cat's going, you've gone too long, Lawless. Luckily, that was the last question. Luckily, that's the end of the, you like that extra isolation sessions. Hopefully, as a whole, hopefully, you know, I'm recording this on Sunday. Lockdown's supposed to end on Friday. Uh, the case numbers are quite alarming and I don't think it's going to end on Monday. Hopefully it does so we can do something about Black Widow, but either way, next week you're going to get some Black Widow content. Because the MCU is back, baby, with a prequel no one asked for that was shot two years ago. If you like that podcast.store, uh, find us on fucking Spotify, YouTube, Anchor FM, anywhere you get podcasts, really. The most important hub to go to, I guess, is the Instagram because uh, our link tree is there and you can just go wherever you want from there. And also you can interact with us and that's very important. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe and like because it's a game of numbers, baby, and we got to... Get up there. Um, and I'm, I think that's all the stuff I had to do. Yeah, The Breakfast Club, good movie. Um, see you next time. I have been Jack. I have been the only half of the You Like That Extra Isolation sessions. And I'll see you on whatever comes next.